August 17th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Job chapters 34 and 35 from the Old Testament. Elihu answered, Listen to my words, you wise men. Hear me, you learned men. For the ear assesses words as the mouth tastes food. Let us evaluate for ourselves what is right. Let us come to know among ourselves what is good. For Job says, I am innocent, but God turns away my right. Concerning my right, should I lie? My wound is incurable, although I am without transgression. What man is like Job who drinks derision like water? He goes about in company with evildoers. He goes along with wicked men. For he says it does not profit a man when he makes his delight with God. Therefore listen to me, you men of understanding. Far be it from God to do wickedness, from the Almighty to do evil. For he repays a person for his work, and according to the conduct of a person he causes the consequences to find him. Indeed, in truth, God does not act wickedly, and the Almighty does not pervert justice. Who entrusted to him the earth? And who put him over the whole world? If God were to set his heart on it, and gather in his spirit and his breath, all flesh would perish together, and human beings would return to dust. If you have understanding, listen to this, hear what I have to say. Do you really think that one who hates justice can govern? And will you declare guilty the supremely righteous one, who says to a king, worthless man, and to nobles, wicked men? who shows no partiality to princes, and does not take note of the rich more than the poor, because all of them are the work of his hands. In a moment they die in the middle of the night, people are shaken and they pass away, the mighty are removed effortlessly. For his eyes are on the ways of an individual, he observes all a person's steps. There is no darkness and no deep darkness where evildoers can hide themselves. For he does not still consider a person that he should come before God in judgment. He shatters the great without inquiry and sets up others in their place. Therefore he knows their deeds. He overthrows them in the night and they are crushed. He strikes them for their wickedness in a place where people can see. Because they have turned away from following him and have not understood any of his ways. So that they cause the cry of the poor to come before him so that he hears the cry of the needy. But if God is quiet, who can condemn him? If he hides his face, then who can see him? Yet he is over the individual and the nation alike, so that the godless man should not rule and not lay snares for the people. Has anyone said to God, I have endured chastisement, but I will not act wrongly any more? Teach me what I cannot see if I have done evil. I will do so no more. Is it your opinion that God should recompense it because you reject this? But you must choose and not I, so tell us what you know. Men of understanding say to me, any wise man listening to me says that Job speaks without knowledge and his words are without understanding. But Job will be tested to the end because his answers are like those of wicked men. For he adds transgression to his sin. In our midst, he claps his hands and multiplies his words against God. Then Elihu answered, Do you think this to be just when you say my right before God? But you say, what will it profit you? And what do I gain by not sinning? I will reply to you and to your friends with you. Gaze at the heavens and see. Consider the clouds which are higher than you. If you sin, how does it affect God? If your transgressions are many, what does it do to him? If you are righteous, what do you give to God? Or what does he receive from your hand? Your wickedness affects only a person like yourself, and your righteousness only other people. People cry out because of the excess of oppression. They cry out for help because of the power of the mighty. But no one says, where is God my creator, who gives songs in the night? who teaches us more than the wild animals of the earth and makes us wiser than the birds of the sky. Then they cry out, but he does not answer because of the arrogance of the wicked. Surely it is an empty cry. God does not hear it. The Almighty does not take notice of it. How much less then when you say that you do not perceive him, 
that the case is before him and you are waiting for him. And further, when you say that his anger does not punish and that he does not know transgression, so Job opens his mouth to no purpose. Without knowledge, he multiplies words. God, what Elihu is talking about, besides being incredibly arrogant, <laughs> makes me really sad because it reminds me a lot of a lot of the false prophets I hear nowadays <sighs> that I see on TV, that I see on Facebook, that I see on Twitter. And you, God, seem so incredibly far away from them. They throw in your name once in a while. But it's truly all about them, their world, the empowerment of the world, their, the finances that come into their world, um, what they can do to affect that, um, that if you'll only believe, great things will come flooding into your life. That sovereignty piece of who you are eludes them. Now, I will totally grant you that it eludes me too. To understand sovereignty, to understand something like infinity, to understand how big you are, to understand how much you love us. I don't get that, um, but I try. I try really hard. I try every day. I'm learning more every day, but I know I could live a million lifetimes and I would still not understand the depth, the depth of that emotion and that depth of that power. I will never understand that. And yet Elihu says, if you sin, does it really affect God? And if you do good, does it really affect God? Really, why are you bothering him? <laughs> and God, I know that you grieve greatly when we sin against you. It's not so much that we're choosing to sin. It's that we're choosing that sin over you, over you, our creator, our father, And so I do know that that affects you personally, but it also affects your work here on earth. That if other people watch me say I'm a Christian and then watch me sin, I know that that greatly affects any sort of ability I have to have conversations with people. I know the opposite is true as well. If I reflect who you are, not who I am, but if I reflect who you are, your grace, your uh, mercy, your forgiveness, your kindness, your love to other people in the best way that I know how, if that reflects in my life, that righteousness does affect you. It does give you things. We are called to glorify you, God. It is ultimately why we are created, to glorify you, to worship you. And so many Christians forget the non-Christians for right now, but so many of the Christians miss this point. We are created to live here on earth, glorifying you and worshiping you. All of our activities, all of our thoughts, all of our emotions should be all about you. To live out a life of, of service to you, of humbleness to you. Being your disciple here on earth so that we can go on eternally to do the same thing, but on a grander scale to worship you and to praise you. And so often we miss that point. So often we get caught up in the world that what I'm doing in my world, whether I'm doing something bad, like Elihu's talking about, if I'm sinning or if I'm being righteous, it really doesn't affect you. It really doesn't have anything to do with you, God. I'm just living my life. Because you're sovereign, if I do something bad, you can punish me. If I'm doing good, you're not going to punish me. This is basically what Elihu's saying. And so you're only going to bother with us when we make wrong choices. And God, I so know that that's not true. I know there's this amazing intimacy that, that you and I have. That, that you wish and desire for everyone in this entire world. I have a relationship with you where I get to talk to you every day. You teach me things. Um, you encourage me. You support me. You discipline me. So take the best possible father relationship that I could ever have and multiply that by infinity. And that's what I have with you. Now, my end of it, I'm still working on. But I have this amazing creator who somehow decided that Janelle Elms was going to be born 
are in this time and here's what her heart was going to look like you knew that my name was going to be called Janelle you knew the things I would struggle with you knew the things that I would glorify you through and it is just amazing to me that the God who gave me life who chose for me to actually exist here on earth would allow me in my incredibly sinful state to worship him to glorify him sending your son to the cross for us for the forgiveness of our sins so that we could stand in front of you and worship you and glorify you and not receive your wrath has to be the best gift that anyone has ever given me That my sin would separate me from you and yet what your son did on the cross for me allows me to not be separated from you. Allows me to have that intimate relationship with you. Elihu did have it right that if you wanted to with just a simple breath as he puts it all of us could be destroyed. And yet for some reason you work in my life and you are consistent in my life and you make my life so full and, and with purpose and with intent me who screws up all the time oh god if only my sin wouldn't affect you how i wish that eli who was right about that but it does and oh, how I wish that I could be more righteous so that that would affect you and affect your work here on earth. That I could reflect who you truly are to more people than I do now. God, I thank you so much for putting me in that book of life, for calling me as your child, and then giving me this amazing gift to glorify you to worship you here on earth as well as eternally and if we call ourselves Christians and that doesn't get us really excited that the reason we're going to heaven is to worship you and glorify you then we probably need to look at why we're calling ourselves Christians because that intimate relationship has to be there that relationship with you where that's what I want to do with my creator. You know that we have conversations all the time. We just had one this morning. I so can't wait to be done with this world. Not because I have some death wish. <laughs> but because I want to be with you. I want to be in heaven. I want to be worshiping you. I want to be glorifying you. The fact that I would get to learn more about you 24 7 without interference from worldly things <sighs> it's something i i wish for on a daily basis i wish i didn't have a job that interfered with my bible time i wish the worldly pleasures didn't distract me and tempt me so that i choose them over over being on my knees and praying to you god I so desire a time where all of those, anything that is not good falls away from my thought process and I am simply in a place where I get to worship you. God, our life here on earth needs to look that way as well. To be passionately, madly in love with you. To wake up in the morning so excited to spend the day with you. To be in awe of watching you work, not only in our own lives, but other people around us day in and day out. To thank you that you do keep me here on earth one more day because that means you still have purposes for me here. Because that righteousness that Elihu's talking about, that's why I'm here, not because I'm righteous, but because you believe somehow, you believe that I can still help your kingdom here on earth. And I thank you for that. I thank you for having one more day where I get to do whatever it is I'm supposed to do for the kingdom before I get my eternal reward, which is to spend forever and ever with you. 
God, I don't understand how all this works. I don't understand how big sovereignty is. I don't understand how deep love is. But I'm trying. And I do know it has everything to do with you and it has nothing to do with me. What I do does affect you, does affect your kingdom. But it's because of your sovereignty, because of your control, because this is your world that you care so deeply about. God, I look forward to the day when I'm in heaven with you and a lot of this knowledge is revealed to me. I'm excited to learn about all the different pieces and how they fit together, but I've got a feeling I won't even care because I'll be in heaven with you. Probably on my knees worshiping you. God, thank you for loving us so much that what we do, whether right or wrong, does actually affect you. In your son's name I pray. Amen.